Um, you're all very welcome. Uh, I just want to say from the outset that uh, I hope you're watching this on a, uh, on a laptop because uh, if you're on a phone or an iPad, we're going to be using some videos and you may lose them. But ever, as Tony has mentioned, it's recorded, so maybe you can follow it up later on. But you may just lose the pictures when we come to that point. So just to alert you to that. So from transition from defence to attack. Uh, so first of all, uh, I want to just try and define where the transition opportunities arise. Um, so to me, they arise when turnovers. Now, I, this term turnover often causes confusion for analysts and so on. What do we actually mean? What I actually mean by this is a turnover when you actually dispossess the opposition, uh, when you actually take it off them. Uh, interceptions, that is, you intercept a pass. Uh, sometimes, again, I see some people may call that a turnover, but I call it an interception if you you just get forced to the ball or you intercept a, a pass. Then restarts or kickouts are opportunities to transfer from defence to attack. So again, the, the, when we're talking from defence attack, you know, the kickouts present that opportunity to us. And you're going to have at least 20 uh, in a match uh, from your own side. You know, if you, most matches will have at least 20 kickouts uh, from each side. So we, you have that number of opportunities to change from a defensive position to an attacking. Uh, so bad passes uh, from the opposition. So again, this is where they make the mistakes. They give a bad pass and put it in, the, uh, in your hands for you. Or you get a lot of cases where the ball is kicked into the goalkeeper's hands. So your goalkeeper now has opportunity to go from from a transition from defence to attack. And of course, then you also have it in, in free kicks and sideline side line kicks. So you have loads of situations where you can uh, uh, have this transition where you may have been in a defensive position that you can now set up an attack. So the outcomes for this webinar is that that you would recognise the speed of thought and action are the keys to successful transition. So speed of thought and speed of action. Recognise what good transition looks like in a game. So we're going to look at uh, some samples of what that looks like. Um, identify the principles of defence and attack. So those of you who have been through, uh, say, a level one course will be very familiar with uh, that terminology. But I'm going to have a look at it again in this context in terms of transition, because those principles um, are, are very important when we're looking at how we uh, uh, operate this transition. And then uh, implementing the components of transition into your coaching practice. So we're having a look at ways that you might actually do this and in your training sessions so that you can sort of work on, on that uh, uh, transition from defence to attack. So maybe we, if we start here, this whole idea of defence and attack, where we usually... Uh, say that you know defense is about keeping the door closed at all times so if we can keep closing the door in the opposition then we can turn them over and then we can uh, have the transition to attack and of course attack is about the open door and of course within that there are very fundamental principles here in terms of when we talk about the principles of defense and attack so for example if you want to close the door you need a lot of depth or numbers and bodies back to do that an attack then you're saying how can I open it up wide and I need width in the attack and how do I create space? So those things uh, start to happen then. And so those principles we often talk about, you know, these are real things that we can look at and analyze in a game for ourselves. So if we then look at transition areas, so uh, as we've seen uh, there that the, in the center here, you have a lot of transition area here. And that, of course, comes from uh, the, the, the kickouts from both sides. So you could have up to 40 up opportunities during the game, 20 from your own side and 20 from the other. Uh, so there's loads of happening around there. But of course, if you can go into the defensive area when you turn them over, and we know how important uh, turnovers are in the game, because if you can turn the, the opposition over, uh, you can create an overlap and better teams it will go right up the field. And they have a higher ratio, if you look in terms of scoring, you have a good chance then of, and from a turnover, and if you can handle that correctly, uh, you have a good chance of getting a score at the other end. Of course, uh, we don't forget that uh, that also in the attacking area, you have an opportunity for transition. Because if you turn the opposition over in their own half, well then, obviously, you're, you're in, in a prime position then to, to, to counter-attack. Now, uh, uh, th this is uh, uh, data now uh, was comes from the um, 
the video analyst uh, for for Dublin. And uh, and what they found was this, that in terms of restarts or kickouts, that if you could manage to get the ball uh, a kicked out within under five seconds, five seconds or under, you stood an 80 percent chance of getting a score. But if you took more than that, the ratio drops to 20 percent. And that is something you probably would have noticed when Cluxton in his heyday, uh, you know, how quick they'd have all always sitting at the post, racing out, placing the ball, getting it out. Now, that's you know, in that level, you can operate maybe at uh, inter-county level. For club level, if you could get target something like eight or nine seconds, I mean, that would really, you know, it would certainly improve uh, your your chances of getting a turnover, uh, or sorry, getting a score at the other end. So that transition it comes from your from the, at quick kick out. Um, but again, we have to be careful of that because, uh, you know, if, if it's not well organized and drill, you know, <laughs> you could just be handed to the opposition. So you need, need to be sure if you're going to do it quickly. And of course, you also need a keeper who in a lot of cases, you know, may, has to be able to kick the ball just standing and just swinging it. And of course, you see that, you know, the better goal, goal keepers inter county level doing that, that now. They can just uh, ping the ball, you know, the, the, the 13, 14 metres accurately just by just standing and just swinging their foot. And so don't underestimate the skill that's involved in that either. So skills become important if you want to be successful at get transition. So that's just something to think about if you, you know, that if you could increase the speed of getting the ball back out again, then you would increase the chances of getting a score at the other end. Now, we're going to look here at in terms of a winning team formula. So, sorry, I just got. Uh, so, uh, so what is the the, uh, the 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 formula here we're looking at? So, what we're trying to do here is that the, that a team that has the most turnovers increases the chances of winning game. That's you know, you'll find that the more they can turn the ball over, uh, and of course. It's not enough to turn it over. You have to be able to, to make the transition correctly. And we'll get into that in the detail in a moment, because it's not just a matter of getting the turnover. It's what you do when you turn it over. So there's a little piece of analysis here uh, was from the Ulster Championship uh, in 2019, Tyrone and Donegal, uh, a match I was at myself. And uh, so I've seen this at first hand as well as looking at a video later on. But the stats from that in terms of turnovers actually were relatively low for an inter-county game. Um, so you throw in at 11 and Donegal had 14. Now you may say, well, there's really a difference at three here. But the difference was what Donegal did that day uh, in Cavan, uh, that uh, how they used that turnover. And that were magnificent that day and how quick they broke from defence. This, and that's what I mentioned earlier, the speed of thought, the speed of action, right? Throne still had 11, but weren't able to break as fast as uh, Donegal. And that, that was the difference in winning and losing that game. Now, so we're now looking at some more stats here. So one of the things to look at is when we turn a ball over, um, how we re make the restart. So one of the stats are that only 12% of counterattacks initiated with a kick pass resulted in a score. Now, this is Dublin stats, by the way. So what they were recognising was that if you turned the ball over and you kick past out of defence, that only 12% initiated with a kick would have resulted in a score, compared to 25% when a hand pass was used. So the latter enabling more players to support the attacking play and for offensive uh, players to initiate their penetrating runs. So here's an idea you can work on. If you can get that, that you know, I'm not saying do, you don't kick pass. If a kick pass is on and the guy is free, great, it's on. Uh, the, the risk, as we can imagine it with a kick is, first of all, it has to be accurate. And the thing is, if, if it's contested out the field, then you're now down to 50-50 chance. So that's why you find then that the, the, uh, the attack either slows down or breaks down as a result of the kick pass. Whereas if you have a hand pass, just uh, uh, lay it off. So that's the way you got to try and get the players around you to understand that when I won this ball, I need somebody to pop this ball and then I can go a one, two. And so th those th that's what really it works is trying to uh, is, is, is uh, that is a force principle. But again, it's like these things are hard and fast, but the stats show 
um, it will get, get a better return. Now, we're going to look here uh, at a piece of video, and this is uh, a, a Tyrone and Dublin here. And what we're going to look at here is the Dublin kickout. Cluxon actually is, is a keeper on, on this occasion. And I, I want you to look here just at the middle, uh, this part here, and just watch now when he makes the kick out. Look at the space here. Look at this Dublin player going across here, right into this space. Bang, right? Look at the space he gets into. And there's Jack McCaffrey, picks it up. So there's only a couple of moves he's in and he pops it over the bar. Now I'm going to rerun that for you because that we know there's sometimes that we delay in the video. So just in case you missed it, I'm just going to run it again. So again, now that you're aware of it, just look at this player here, right? Look at the space here, because that's what we are after seeing. And that's what Cluxon is aiming for. So just watch it, how it all works. Do the space. And of course, the Dublin player got away from the throw man, away off him. And you had three thrown to, uh, to two over there, and yet this is what happens. Okay, so uh, so the, the thing about that is in terms of uh, them taking that ball up the field. Uh, they can do it in nine seconds from the time he kicked the ball to put the ball went over the bar. Nine seconds. So, uh, so we need to be aware. How, you know that that again is about speed of movement uh, and speed of thought. And so it just shows you, you know, how, how alert defenders need to be. Uh, you know, on a on a kick out, the defenders, your own defenders, on the opposition's kick out, because that's how they got caught out there. Now. Uh, so there, there's you. There's looking at how that's a transition from a kickout, and that's an effective use of it. And you would have seen a lot of those. Uh, in fact, if you looked at the, um, I was looking at the uh, Tyrone Monaghan match, uh, which was uh, TJ Gar, which was able to show the camera behind the goals, and it give you a good picture of the way uh, that Rory Began and Morgan were trying to find players and the way that this, the gaps were being created. So that's what the teams are trying to do. They're trying to move into the centre, leave these gaps in the side, then drop the ball into the space. But then again, it, re it, it relies on an accurate uh, goalkeeper, uh, an accurate kick, kick out by the goalkeeper. Now, this one here, uh, this is uh, a situation where a turnover happens. And what you're looking at here is, uh, a, let me just, this is, uh, I think it'll be Col Colin Kavanagh. What's going to happen here is that the ball will be turned over so I want you to watch what happens when the ball is turned over. There's Ka Colin Kavanagh. Uh, he's, he's going to be turned over now, just about now, right? So he's just inside the 45 on the far side, right? So he's turned over and Dublin break. So look at the, how quick they are free from that turnover and into the space and over the bar. OK, so it took them six seconds to do that. Six seconds from from uh, Colin Kavanagh turned the ball over. But the thing is, again, if you turn it as, as getting that first pass right and the other guys thinking quickly, we've suddenly turned this over. And where are the best options? So, so that means somebody had their head up, looked around them. So we're going to run it again. Just watch it again. Colin Kavanagh is about to be turned over. There he goes across inside the 45. Now, see, see the way players are unmarked, the centre half forward standing here, completely unmarked. And a man, it, see, fist pass, first pass was a fist pass, right? And then within six seconds, it's over the bar. Right, so there, there is uh, showing you the, the, uh, the effect of um, the, the turnover, how costly it is, and of course, how advantageous it can be to you if you can use it correctly and have your players reacting. But it just shows you, you know, there, that uh, centre half forward, whatever that was that day, was standing completely unmarked, uh, which meant that a forward was uh, asleep somewhere. Now, sorry, a defender was asleep somewhere. Now, this one here, oh, sorry, let's just move on. This one here is, I want to get a little exercise for you. And what I'm going to do is, uh, I just want, I'm going to pause the video just as the, uh, the ball is turned over 
And the question is this, when the player ball uh, is in the player's hands, I want you to decide, if you were the player, what option would you take? What option would you take? So I'm just going to run it and then pause it. So there's Dublin's an attack here. Drone's going to turn them over. Ball's turned over. Sorry, that's it now. OK, so what would you do? I'll just run it back again, just in case you missed that. Right. So when the ball is turned over, what would you do? No. Do, you, do you want sorry, to, do you want, sorry. Do you want to do you want to put the do you want them to put the uh, the feedback into that? No, into yeah, no, they don't need to. No, they don't need to, Tony. Right, okay. uh, just 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 note it for yourself. Just have your own thoughts. Look around the field now, and say that if you were uh, that player. What would you do next? There it is. Okay, I'll just get it now. Oh, sorry. Just to that point. Okay. Now, some of you may obviously have said, look at this guy sitting here. He's completely unmarked. So you'd say, that's the, that's the option there to kick past there. No one else around here, right? They're all close around here. So what did they do? Now, there's no right or wrong answers here because it depends the player has the ball. They have the responsibility to decide. They decide what's the best option, you know, and they may make the wrong decision. Uh, they may be working to a game plan and being told if this happens, this is what I do. So there's lots of other factors can go on. So we can't say absolutes here. What we're going to look at is what did they do and did it work? Now, they could have done something else and it could have worked. But we'll just have a look to see what they did. So he goes the other way. He carries the cross and he goes to the far side, right? So he's trying to, he's going back and forward here. So why are they doing this? Just think about this for a moment. And then they're wide, still wide. There's a guy here and here creating space in the right hand corner. Uh, acting now they're right across the other side. Up comes the full back. Here comes the full back. So they've created a situation now where they've got an overlap here. Right, so they've got a, a four on two actually at one moment there, and they come right through, and Peter Hart pops the ball over the bar. So you might say, what were they at there? So what they're trying to do, as I'm looking at it, you might make another interpretation of what they seem to be doing was to be unpredictable. The predictable thing might have been pop it out to the number 15, and if you looked up, there might have been more. Uh, we'll, we'll have a look at it again now, uh, and in terms of a number of uh, how. Dublin might have closed that down. So what they seem to do was they took it left, they took it right. So there's, well, what they're doing is they're trying to keep Dublin guessing as what side they're going to attack. And they pulled it off, off to the, the left, and then they created the space on the right for the full back to come up into that. That's what happened. So how about you look at it and just see what went on here? So if you look at this here, look at the number of Dublin players are here, look, and there's one Tyrone player. So the risk it probably would have been he could have been caught if he had a pop to there. They're trying to get players back, possibly, right? But anyway, this is what they did. So here they're... You know, Dublin's trying to figure out are they going to come up the right? And there's, you'll see the, the, the full forward will go to the right corner here, creating the space. So the defences think it's going to go here. So it's sucking them across that side. So you see Dublin's travelling over. Now they switch it back. So if a lot of looking at the number of Dublin players now are stuck on that side. See, if you just, just that, I'll just go back a wee second here and just show you this. If you just look here, right? So this is... So there, the Dublin players are going off there, as you see, to as on 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 our right hand side. So then they get it across. So now there's less, and here's is where they can allow the overlap. So there's the three thrown three to two now situation coming up. The three on two there, and then in comes uh, um, uh, Peter Hart to, to finish it. So that's what you're looking at in terms of of what teams are trying to do uh, to create that uh, uh, movement from defence. So they're trying to create 
that's what see the amount of what and that again we talked about that's one of the principles of attack is width. So they're putting that into practice. Now let's have another one here for you. Uh, this is another turnover situation. Uh, again, it's Colin Cavanaugh that happens to turn it over. Again, I'm going to ask you the question. Uh, what would you do if you had the ball in your hand uh, at this moment in time? Now, the, the camera sometimes doesn't show you the full thing, so don't feel I'm, I'm playing gotcha with you here, but just have a look around anyway. Uh, so just think, what would you do if you had the ball in your hand at this moment in time? So the ball is turned over. Oh, sorry, I can't. I think I made it on too fast here. So we're here now. That, there, there, there is there. That's the turned over ball there. Right. So is he really he's telegraphing to you where he's going to go here? All right. So what would you do if you had that ball? So just think about what options you might have. Now, as you know, in a match situation, you're going to dog on that leg today. You've got to decide a split second what's on and what isn't. So let's have a look uh, at what happened here. So what he does is, this is the kick pass out of defence, and the reason he done this is because he had this guy away out on his own on the right hand side. So that's an appropriate decision. So although when I say to you the stats would show that maybe we should look for a hand pass, we can't be slaves to these things. We have to think for ourselves. The player has to say what is on, and if that's safe, and that's a better option, then you go for it. Right. Well, let's see. But let's see how this uh, transpires then. So the, there's the delay in that side. Now is where this thing of going across again, right? Now I want you to just pause this for a second. I'm going to take this. This I want you to notice something here. I'm going to just send this back, and I want you to look carefully at this player who kicks the ball. Now just watch what he does here. I'm just going to. Now I want you. To, what I want to ask you to do is. What foot did he kick with when he kicked it? Just, just that's the point I want to make. Right. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I got I went back too far. Uh, just get it going again. So here we come again. This is the kick pass. Right. So I, when I hit this button, it's it's it's, um, it's it's putting me back. Wait, I just I'll bring it forward here again. So the point I'm making here is this. This is this was a left foot a kick, right? From the left side, right? Not there, where we are here. The point I'm making here is this. It, this is why it's so important for players to be uh, dual sided because he sends a, a, a lovely left foot a pass. If he was to use a right foot here, that becomes more awkward. Now, if he, in this case situation, he's unmarked, so he's at less risk of being dispossessed. But if he, if he has a player close to him, and has to turn on to his right to make that pass, he's a less chance of making it. That sort of emphasizes the importance of being able to be two sided. He, he, he can automatically use his left, which is appropriate foot to kick across. So that's why we, in coaching, we're trying to emphasize the importance of being, being able to have kick with your left and kick with your right and kick with your, and fist with your left and, kick, uh, and fist with your right. And I'm emphasizing this point here is because. I analysed players who concede turnovers, and what I found was this: this and uh, particularly when the ball was in their hand, players who had only uh, and usually they were right-handed players, when the pass should have been given with the left hand, that is, they should have been giving it off to the right. They should have used their left hand across their body to give it. They turned instead to to, to use the right. That moment allowed the opposition to get their hand in. The other thing is. If you're moving, you can't do it fluidly and, and do it at speed. So that's so you see it. Just watch out for that and ask yourself, why are players getting turned over, uh, especially when the ball is in their hand? And often that is will pop up. So it's just something to be become aware of. Now we'll just play the song for you. 
So here's the left footer pass coming called beautiful kick right across. And here you have the overlap coming again from the defence. So the, the whole Dublin defence is out of caught out because of that one kick across, an accurate kick. And of course, we have the finish there, Frank Stephen McKernan maybe finished it up. So, I mean, so even the only thing we're saying is you can talk the tactics you, all you like in terms of getting it out and getting the space, but you also have to have the skills if you want to do it at speed. Uh, and so you, so we can't underestimate the skill level involved in getting that quick transition. Now, moving then, as we mentioned, some of the things about the principles of offence and attack. And uh, so I'm just revisiting this because this is why this fits in. So uh, I actually I put this little fella here oh, the, uh, and I just use this thing about add scab. Uh, so yeah, add scab to the forward. You put him on his ass here, you know. So it's just to get that idea across in terms of anything. So the key principles in defence are anticipating, anticipating where the next move is. Now, one of the things you'll find, of course, is a lot of players are that they're watching what we call ball watching. They're watching the player in possession with the ball. They're not watching where the ball is likely to go next and they don't know how to cut it out. So they need to be watching what other moves might be ahead. So that's to anticipate. So that anticipation is a skill. Depth, we talked is about numbers. So they want to close the door. It's about getting bodies back. That you know, if the guys are going to come through, they're going to have to go through a lot of bodies. That's a, so they can't get through the middle. Um, delay. Well, that's the key thing in terms of you know that in defending. We must be able at least delay the player if we can't dispossess. I give the others players time enough uh, to get into position to cover off. Uh, determination. I always put determination for all players because you have to be determined. Uh, uh, really determined to be with your man uh, and be, be forced to the ball. All that, so that's in people's heads. That 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 particular aspect. Support, of course, is supporting the player coming out again. If we want the quick transition, we need to support the player as soon as it's turned over. If we're going to maximise uh, that advantage, concentration and control. Well, you've seen a couple of examples there of lack of concentration by Tyrone defenders. You know, giving players far too much, and that's me here. We are at, at, at the top level, so you, you have to be always in uh, concentrating and in control of your thoughts here, because if you're starting to wonder, uh, if you're not focused, then these then the uh, uh, other players will take advantage of it. Accuracy, accuracy of passing, importance of seeing community defence there. You know, the accurate hand pass, the accurate kick pass. So these are back to the skills. And back to these principles, and balance is, is is that to be able to defend on the left or the right, or the centre. So that doesn't matter what side they come. That you know that you don't start to have weaknesses. That the opposition can say, well, you know, all we got to do is tack down the left or tack down the right. And uh, the Dublin Allen has actually told us that I, I, I think it was I can't remember which year it was anyway. Uh, the Tyrone, uh, Dublin beat Tyrone, and what they did was the previous analysis showed. That Trom were easier turned over when they were attacking down the left side. That was the they knew that going into the game, and they just focused on it. So these sort of things we have to be careful of. That we need to to make sure that opposition is not looking at us and saying, "Well, we know where the weakness is here." So coming then to attack, I'm talking about the principal attack. So surprise is the essence of attack. So if we just get that idea. Uh, of, of that we know so as I know this is a, comes from a military term so we don't tell the opposition that we're coming you know we hit them as quick as we can if we're predictable it gives us the, the, the defence a chance to get into place so I mean, I'm coaching players to try to say to them is that every toe tap and every bounce that a player takes out the field is an advantage to the defender because he's got time to cover you just ask defenders that. They say, do you love to see guys carrying balls and, and toe tapping it about and bouncing it around? Because those seconds gives them time to, to cover off. So we need to think, so surprise, and also we have to be a bit unpredictable if we are going to have an effective attack. So if we are going to get that transition and make the most of it, then we have to apply the principles of attack. So I'll put in the wasp again a little... Uh, um, way of trying to remember the mad wasp and how, or in other words add a little bit of a sting to our attack so again the principles are mobility your players have to be moving you've seen the players moving off the ball creating space the corner forward the full forward they're moving back and forward creating 
so if you you can't do that unless you're mobile enough, and you and yet you keep that uh, movement, anticipating, anticipating again the line of the attack, um, and what's the next move? Again, I'm not repeat determination. Again, it has a sub about work rate. What's yeah, and we've seen that example of what Jerome were doing there, trying to create width all over the place, right? Accuracy, accuracy of passing, accuracy of shooting. So maybe you got those players in there, uh, you know, from tight angles, can uh, they need to be able to put it away. Space is about creating space, so we could see the forwards doing that. P is penetration. Penetration simply meant that you must create an overlap. And that is often, you know, nowadays with blanket defence, we tend to play the ball around. Nobody takes somebody on. But well, well, if you can break, if you can break the line, you've created an overlap. So you can do that without taking into the tackle, but we have to think of how do we create that? We have to create the overlap. So often one twos work, you know, by you playing and going again. And that is the difficulty often we see at club level. Guys carry the ball and carrying the ball and they won't release the ball. And so all we do is get trapped and playing around the place. So if we can, you know, and often we find good players like this, they're not prepared to release the ball and go again. So if we can get that sort of idea of creating the overlap, then that's what we mean about penetration. Now, I'm going to talk about these principles later on in the context of the players, because these are what I call coaches jargon. So if you say this to players, they may not have the same understanding of what you're talking about, but I'll, I'll revisit that uh, later. Now, I'm going to have a look here at uh, Dublin uh, and uh, this is uh, what Dublin was up against uh, Tyrone's blanket defence a bit here. So here is, if you look at the start of this clip here, you know, there's, there's lots of Tyrone players back here and Dublin are trying to get through. So I want you to just watch what they do, how to get through here. So, and again, we're talking in this whole idea from transition to defence. Once from defence to attack. So, OK, you can get that far, but the, the point is how do you make it uh, work if you if you've managed to turn the ball over and then you, you hit something like this how do you cope with it well, let's look at how Dublin cope with this so there you are we're bogged down a bit here so what are they going to do now right we're all over here and drone players are there so what do they do they do the same as a drone did they now start switch the ball to the far side here's the width right so there's but there we are out number three to two. So what's Dublin going to do now? They're to realise that's not going to work, right? So watch what they do. Back we go again. So this time they switch it back and we have a player coming like Tyrone up from the back. Here comes James McCarthy right through and he'll stick it in the net. Right, so I'll just run that again for you. Just watch, just when, when they were boxed down, this is what they did. So we've seen the same patterns what Tyrone were at. If you're boxed one side, you switch it back and forward, then you create the space, then you have a guy coming from defence to create the overlap. So here we are, they're boxed in, they realise we're not going to get any through anywhere here. Now we're going to start, there's the accurate kick pass, Important how accurate important the skill there was, and an accurate kick pass right across the opposite side. And now again they realise this is, we're still not out of the woods here, so we have to try another way, but they know they're sucking Tyrone across. And this is where, again, there's the, the, the defender coming up, in this case, McCarthy, right through. And it leaves it, in this case, he can stick it in the net. So you see the similar patterns to what um, Tyrone and Dublin were doing. So Tyrone was doing the other clips, bring it across, suck the defence across, then you have the, the, the backs are overlapping and coming up. So you see the same patterns. Now, we're going to move on to uh, another one here for you. Uh, that's the same one. Okay. Now, this one here. Uh, let me just see what I'm going to show you here now. Yeah. This. This is. Oh, this is Tron again. Uh, this is another attack here. They're coming. This is a different way. Now, I'm going to uh, just, just have a look at this and I'm going to rerun it and I'll talk you through it again. So you just get used to the, the clip. Now, what I want you to think about in this one here is this. Uh, I want you to watch uh, the the throne full forward line, uh, particularly I guess McAllister was number 15 here. Watch him. 
right? I just want to keep your keep your eye on you. Watch the rest of the play, what they're doing, but I want you to watch the forward movement in here. Okay. Now there's Michalski there, uh, right? Just on your right hand side. So here's Tron creating an over there. They have an option there. Could have went up this, the wing, they switch it across. Now watch McAllister. Look at the movement. Watch McAllister. Watch him. Look at the movement he's making. Right? Now he doesn't get the ball. Right? But is important in allowing the Tyrone player to get into position to get a shot. So the, what we're looking at here is him. McAllister is creating all the space here. So we could draw the defence and see the work rate he had to do, the number of runs he had to make in order that we they could execute that score. So again, in terms of uh, it, it, we could finally get it where trans, uh, the transition from attack, they're coming out of there. So the, the forwards can't be standing around and be, be, be being predictable. So he's creating that space by his runs. So those are factors we have to think about. That's why those principles are creating, but have been mobile, apply. Now, we're going to have just a, a look at a few things here in terms of things we can do. So one of the things to think in terms of this is that well, if we're coming out of defence, to recognise that the half forward line is the outlet for balls out of defence. It's a link between defending and scoring. So it may not always be there, but that's what you're looking for. That your half forwards, when we turn the ball over in here, we should be looking, uh, the, the half forwards should be making themselves available as the outlet um, uh, for that turnover. So they, so they can look up and see somebody available for them. The next one uh, I want to point out is about exploit the space in front of the sweeper with runners from the half back line. So when you have sweepers, this is what you see both Tyrone and Dublin doing was what they did was uh, you have to you create that space. But if you can get the runners coming in from from the half back and midfield, then you can uh, take advantage of that. But then again, they have to be coming at speed and moving the ball at speed. Now, when playing against the sweeper, we need to work the ball further up the field before switching the line of the attack. So here is that, you know, that we're saying here's the ball being crossed by Dublin. So they're right up to the 45 uh, before they switch it over. So you're trying to, to, you know, if you do it too far out, it's easier to close it down. That's the point. You're trying to suck the, 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 their defence into a position that they can't recover from. That's what you're really trying to do. So you, if you break, come up, uh, at, at, uh, with a sweeper, try and pull them across because they have all the sweepers back here. You're trying then, then be able to switch it across the field and get the space in the far side. Right. So then, in terms of putting into practice, so how do we uh, um, put this into practice in a in a training session? So one of the things we do is 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 video analysis of games, and we need to run them and freeze the frame so that you get getting players to look at. Um, how they move the ball, wants to turn the ball over, or the, uh, from the kickouts. How are we doing that? And we need to look at that in terms of. Now, I do a fair bit of video analysis myself, and uh, one of the things you do find, discover when you're doing video analysis is this is the amazing patterns. It's just unbelievable sometimes when you look at it that teams keep repeating. Now, I'm talking about at club level. You know, you'll see them repeating uh, the same kickout down the same side. You know, and nobody thinks what's going on, on here. So obviously the goalkeeper is not reading what's going on out the front, out, out there. And of course, it's very difficult for from the line to try and change that. As you know, so so sometimes then the, you need to get the keeper to be more. What is going on? You've got to read what's going on. If we're not running that side, we need to switch it. We need to start to go short. We need to see to go long. So the thing is, that's what helps the the players because by by video analysis they start to see. Oh my God, that's what we're doing. We're just kicking it down the same side. We're repeating the same old thing and we're not ch changing this around anyway. Now, so that that's from your games, but also do video analysis of your in-house games. Again, freeze frames. So the thing is, often we think of video analysis in match situations, which is often difficult because you're trying to set it up and you get permissions and all sorts of things, trying to make it happen. It's a lot easier if you could have an in-house game and then... Uh, run it back to the players so that you can actually see what are we doing when we turn the ball over. And the problem is 
players don't react quick enough when the ball is turned over. You know, both defence doesn't react quick enough in terms of getting the ball out the field and forwards, you know, don't know to cover back. So, again, it's, 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 uh, this is sort of stuff, it's very hard to feed back to players as the visual thing will show them this. Now, predetermined tactics using full team. So, again, it, you know, we need to practice our kickout strategy. We need to create situations of turnover situation. In other words, try and create restarts uh, from different parts of the field. And um, so one of the things uh, I, I use to do that, I, I often put five cones down the side of the length of the field and five down the other, and I put a ball at each one of them. And then I number them. So what I do then is I call a number from one to ten. So when the ball goes out of play, so it goes, goes, the ball goes wide or over the bar, whatever the score, I just can't shout a number. So that, that means the play has to start from that. So the players have to race to that point. So now they're all, uh, uh, they can be out of place. Uh, so because matches are chaotic, they're not set pieces. We try to work it like that. And that's not the way the game works. So if you have the game, then practicing, starting the game from different positions in the field and, you know, being called, you know, uh, say you've got to sprint and receive a ball at the sideline. So that you create this sort of chaos so that they can know how then how to react to that and how to cover back. So those sorts of little ideas you could try. Uh, set a task to the team, play and review. In other words, one of the things to do is to uh, is ask players. I mean, often as coaches, we're trying to come up with all the strategies. The best one is to say to players, how are you going to give them the problem? How are you going to solve this? And, and, and they can figure it out for themselves. And, you know, you might practice reduced numbers because, you know, sometimes you just have to walk them through it uh, unopposed. Uh, maybe just getting players to, you know, to kick the ball out, maybe lay it off, whatever the pattern you're trying to work. So they just get practice and understand this is how we do it. Because if we just play sort of competitive games all the time in training, they miss the point. So you're trying to re say, this is what I want. You want you to kick it. I want you to lay it off. I want somebody else running or whatever it is. So that's what we need to be doing. It's all about uh, uh, rehearsing it. So here is just a, a, a couple of patterns. I mean, you, I'm sure you can come up with loads of these, but that is this is sort of a, 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 you might have seen it, some of that coming through in the Toronto Dublin one. And that is you're coming at the if you turn the ball over here and you're trying to work the ball up this side. And this is where you have your cornerback, your halfback coming up. And so you, so we need to practice that, you know, and. You might say, to, uh, somebody said to me though, there, but that's not um, as, as suggesting this to them. They said, well, that's very difficult in a, in a training session because the players know what you're going to do. And that's that's great because if you can do it and then knowing, then you'll you'll be even better when you come into the opposition because good oppositions will read you anyway and they'll put you on that level of pressure. So that, don't, don't be hung up on the fact that, you know, ah, well, our, our lads know it. So because you're they're forcing the players to think, what is a better alternative if it doesn't work, right? So even though you, you know, so they know, I mean, the oppositions know you're likely to do something like this. So you're really trying to refine it. There's an alternative one. So what happens if you're blocked? They say, okay, so if I'm blocked, well then I can go this way. So I go across field, I do the support play, and you still have the corner back and the half back coming through and collecting it as well. So it's just getting players to think and work. Those looks at very simple patterns, but can they actually do it? You know, um, can they do it under pressure then? Here's another little activity you could do here. Uh, and this is where you set up a square here. Uh, as you see, it's just an AC. This is what I think it's only about 16 players here. So I'm just working, really thinking at club level and your small numbers and so on. So what you could do here is uh, you create a square up here, but the 45. You have three versus two. So you have three blues against two reds. So the advantage is to the blues, right? So they, they uh, so you have, and they are, uh, uh, then the reds are, are going to attack, right? So they've got, these guys have to win the ball. You play it around here. So as soon as the ball is turned over, these guys have to go to react. Because that's what you've got to do, is react to the turnover. And then uh, if the Blues won it on the way out and they turn it over, then they can go through the gates or play it through the gates here as a, as a target uh, uh, of supporting each other in defence. Now, you could play another other way of it. You could just decide whoever wins the ball. 
you know, whether the reds become the tackers or the blue becomes the tackers, it doesn't matter. And the others have to play it out. But it's just a way the, of trying to get uh, to try to get as close to the game situation where you're trying to get the players in here to react to the turnover. That's what you're trying to do. How do I react to the turnover? Right, uh, I'll just move on one minute. Now, so the, the just then, uh, uh, this is just, I'm making this reference here. Uh, this is a, from a booklet by Gerard O'Connor, who's the Director of Coaching in, in Dublin County Board, which I, I wish to acknowledge, uh, uh, worked with me on this uh, presentation. And he produced a lot of uh, material like this, and this is just a little sample from it. And there's loads of little games and ideas of how to uh, uh, create these sort of situations in terms of uh, creating more turnovers and transition from defence and attack. So it's just a resource you might want to avail of. Now, in terms then of uh, key principles for good transition. So we're saying then if you are uh, uh, want to get transition into an attacking position, it has to be as fast as possible. Speed is essential. You pressure the defending team not to get organised. So that's what you're doing all the time is you have to make it. That's why it has to be fast. It does require good decision making because you have your whoever person possession of the ball becomes key. Do they kick it? Do they fist pass it? Because that becomes key. And and what is the best route to go? And then being able to switch to the point of the attack. So we see in those ample clips we're looking at, uh, both Dublin and Toronto, we're switching the points of attack, trying to find where they can make the breakthrough. Communication is vital. That is, there needs to be an understanding amongst your own players uh, that that to let the players know what option is on, because you know they they may not see it. And we need. And, and one of the things I'll just say to you in communication is this: uh, visual is three times more, more effective than verbal. So the problem is even if you're out in a pitch, and especially if there's a big crowd or whatever, they're not going to hear each other anyway. So get them the idea of being able to get hand signals or some sort of physical signals as to where they want the ball. Shouting for it, you're telegraphing it to the opposition anyway. And though anyway, it's too late by the time they hear it. So just think in terms of if they are communicating to each other in terms of what direction to go or what options might be on, think of how they could do it visually. So you need, again, put that into practice in your training sessions. So, uh, so that brings me to any questions. So I'll, I'll just end on that. Um, so if uh, you want to go into the chat box or switch on your mic and uh, uh, ask me any question you want. If, if, there's anybody, if there's anybody wants to ask a question, I'll have to prop your hand if you can, because I have to unmute you. Or as Brent said, you can text it into the chat box there. But if put up your hand, there's a wee icon at the top of the screen that you can raise your press, that'll raise your hand, I'll see it. And uh, I can unmute you to come on and speak to Bratton. Now, what I'm waiting on is I just see there, Padraig, you're asking about uh, the risk of bringing the ball across your own warm up. Well, that's a, a basic thing. We don't do that. <laughs> uh, so, you, you, I mean, you, it might appear they're going across there from the distance and the angle, remember. But no, you, that way, uh, you, we, it'd be very rare you do that. Uh, okay, anyone else? Want to ask a question or make a comment even maybe you disagree with some of the stuff that's fine you can say that because this is about sharing go ahead there's somebody a hand up there yes yes hold on now ty uh hold on okay i think you can come on you can you can um so judge yourself now is that verona is it verona Hi, yeah yeah can you hear me okay yeah. yes yeah. Yeah, great. Thanks for that. That was really um, helpful. I suppose one of the real takeaway messages for me is um, your point about involving the players in the decision making. And I think that's just so important. Um, I, I feel playing myself, I wouldn't have been involved or we wouldn't have been drawn in as much. But I think that's so important. And as a coach now, I'm trying to do that with with um, the team I'm coaching over here in uh, Brighton. Um, right. But if you had any advice about I suppose trying to bring that in, you know, do you bring that into every training session or, you know, do, do you bring those kind of conversations and decision decision making things into training all the time and get the players, you know, like I'm thinking of, um, you know, thought tasks or do you ever give players like tasks that they have to think about a, 
a, a task before coming to training? Have you had any um, kind of, yeah, has that worked for you in the past? So any any strategies in that regard would be helpful. Thank you. Thanks, Verona. Yes, I, I, I mean, I, I would be doing that all the time. I try to create a situation where you've got to get the players thinking. The way you get players thinking is ask them questions. So you, so even if you play, if I played a match, I play 10 minutes and I stop. And then I'd say, OK, I get the players, the, the team size, and I want you to them to do the analysis. And listen to hear what they say. Try and get them to hear. To, and they're very good at it. You let them at it. And then say, well, what are you going to do differently? We'll go back to the game. So I would be doing that all the time. You would be breaking them and saying, you know, try and not tell them. I, my principle as a coach is, don't tell them unless they don't know. Now, one of the things I'll give you an example of uh, is we're listening to some coaches uh, um, and just observing them. So you get a situation where I'll give you a, a real example. I, a, a player I was watching one night, at the, a coach, that this player came in and uh, he he took a shot he, he, from between the 13 metre line and the end line, which was too tight an angle. And he really should have laid the ball back. Now, what the coach did was saying, he says, you should have done this and that. So what's the player do? You can nearly guess what the player said. He starts to argue with them. Mm -hmm. He starts to think, oh, well, I took the right decision. And so now the coach has no influence. In fact, he's switching the player off. And all the coach had to say is, what would what have been another option for you when you're in that decision? Get the player to think that through. If the player doesn't know, you can give him a hint. So who else was around you? Try and not rush in with the answer. And if, I mean, that's one of the things I'm, we're training coaches, try and say to them, become a questioning coach mm, and wait yeah. a bit and time it. So create, the, oh, I would say for all of create situations, uh, you know, that you're asking them, what did we do next? How did you, how do you think that went? How could we have done that differently? That's, that's really the principle. Yeah, thank you so much. I, I'm definitely trying to do that. But um, yeah. yeah, I, uh, yeah, take, take that on board. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you, Veronica. Uh, thank you, now, thank you, Veronica. Uh, there's another couple of questions on here. Doug has yeah. asked you text in there to say, Brenton, do you think that the blanket defence has helped the game as a whole? <laughs> well, <is> it, <laughs> well, it depends. <laughs> uh, I mean, I suppose if you, I mean, uh, maybe, maybe I mean, this is my view, and I can only say it's my view, right? I, I think that uh, that teams who resort. <laughs> Uh, to blanket defences as lacks confidence. Because what they're saying is, uh, our, we see the game as keeping the score low uh, and uh, so that we can't risk letting the ball away and, and attacking. Now, teams are starting to change around that. But there is a time you do need to defend that. I mean, for example, uh, if I was in a situation and I knew the opposition was much better than me, I would be saying to teams, Defend, really defend, like a blanket defence for your first half. But you're not going to win the game by defending. You're going to at some stage have to open up. And you might say, I'll hold the game, to, you know, maybe to the quarter of the game, and then we'll go for it. But you you must at some stage go for it. Now, uh, so, so, so the, on the other hand, you know, at, at, at the other, my main concern about blanket defence is spectators, to be honest with you. Uh, because the players will say, well, OK, the result works for us. We won the game. But for a lot of spectators, it's not nice to watch. And that's what's one of the concerns I'd have for the for the G when that is. And thanks to God, it's starting to change it, but teams are opening up now and attacking more. But there was a period there when it was very difficult for spectators to, to, to watch. Uh, it wasn't entertaining. So I think that's, that's just uh, um, in terms of the blanket. That's my view on the blanket defence. Uh, now, uh, when you turn the ball over and players are committed to the attack, OK, how do you ensure that you don't leave the space behind? OK, yeah, that's a good point. And that's about communication, because uh, if if the if the corner back decides to go forward, somebody has got to know to drop back. The half back has got to drop back. So that does become communication. Remember, one of the key communicators is the goalkeeper to call to players to fill the gap as the guys go forward. But that does, you're absolutely right. There has to be an understanding. You know, you can't you can't leave the, the door open behind you. Uh, any ideas about game-based scenario picture? Okay, sorry. Somebody asked me about uh, software. I, I use Dartfish uh, just to answer that question for you. Um, the uh, Any ideas of what game-based scenario practice okay, could be set up for the deep-running attacker? Okay, join the play late. That's okay. I'm breaking the line. Yeah. 
The thing, the thing about this is this: when you get um, a play, uh, um, a running attacker, which you're describing here, somebody's broken free. Simple as that. Uh, so somebody has to work to get back. So what happens? Somebody stopped somewhere and allowed that guy go. That's really what happened. So somebody has to take responsibility. So I think when you look at uh, when you look at uh, video analysis, you start to see this. Somebody just did not. They sort of give up. They didn't go flat out to chase the guy down. Or you no, know, the th thing is, if a guy passes you by, you know you you got to say, well, I've got to find how do I get back and create numbers. So often players don't know where to go. So even if they just run back into the middle of the fence, they're just clogging the place up. But they shouldn't be standing. You know, that's where I mean, backs will be screaming at you when you see. Uh, 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 you know, the half forward, half uh, forwards not covering back and the player goes past them and they sort of just look at them, you know, with an athlete because you'd be racing right back and, and getting the numbers back to create the turnover. So that really is about somebody not taking responsibility. Uh, anything else? Um, somebody, anybody else had here? Uh, software, OK. All right. How, how, do you, oh, how do you think uh, lower leagues would not be? Wait, 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 I'll just get this one here now. There's a number of questions here. I'll just see if I can get them here. You better, yeah. you better you think, maybe, you better, you better maybe call the question out, Brent, and then the rest. Yeah, will, yeah. Says, do you think the lower leagues would not be able to deliver this level of senior football, especially with small numbers? Yeah, it's you look, you know, and for any coach, and no matter what level you're working at, you have to work with the players around you. That's that's what we're always faced with. You know, inter county is probably the easiest in one way. Because you've got talented players, they've got the skills. So a lot of time is 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 trying to get understanding with each other. Whereas you're now going to be uh, stuck with the problems of skill, you know that they may not have the skill level, may not have the fitness level. So you cannot, you know, expect that level of return. All you can do is still work those same principles. They still will apply. The same principles will apply in terms of defence and attack. And that's all you can ever do is try to work those principles. So even if you take if you take your defenders and let's say they're not the greatest at, at, at tackling without fouling, but even if you could get them to come back and clog the place up, you know, then that start that will actually start to delay the opposition. So you 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 always have to work with what you've got and try, but you're still work off the same principles. That's what I would say to you. So you, you know, we just have to understand how you know. What the level of challenge might be at, a, a, you know, at a lower league football and so on. Um, one of the things I want to say to you is, uh, uh, is in terms of language uh, and, and with player. I mentioned you there about um, the principles of attacking the fence and woods and space. Those mean certain things to you, and you understand them. But if you are talking to, um, if you're talking to um, the players, then talk about moving the ball fast. You know, uh, moving the ball at speed, you know, play the wings, try and just think of simpler terminology. So just be careful of those sort of jargon phrases. We assume a lot of the time the players know what we mean. Um, uh, so because often we are talking coach language to them. Uh, let me see what else is here. Uh, how would you counter uh, I that at this spinal up set up down the middle? OK, for kickers to force the turnover. OK. Teams have tried zonal man to man marking. Let me say, okay, would you would you go zonal in a more compact middle block and just offer up the short kick out? All right, there's a lot in there. Now, really, you aren't trying to see. Can I? I think what you're saying to me here, Stefan, is uh, you know how do you maximise getting the turnover uh, from the opposition's kick out? And, and that's and that's great if you you know that's what you're really trying to do. Um, so. There's a number of things about that is is that if you have an understanding, again, it's about a communication understanding that if the opposition won the ball, uh, what do we do? Now, again, I would that'd be a great task to set to your players. What do you think you do? Because if we prescribe it and they try it out, they say you don't know what you're talking about. So if you say to them, you have a go now, just just do it. Let's see what what options are open to you now. Things that are likely to come up with. That's why I'd be careful about prescribing it. But when you say, one of the things is, how quick can you close the guy down? That is, as soon as he wins the ball. For example, 
I've seen strategies where I remember one time watching Kerry and Tyrone and Oma and uh, and Hecky Dunahy was playing midfield for Kerry that particular day. So I'm going back. And uh, Tyrone were kicking the ball straight down on top of Dunahy. And the guys were saying beside me, what the fuck are Tyrone at here? And what they were at was they allowed Dunahy to win the bloody ball because, you know, but as soon as he came down, he was surrounded and they turned him over. So that's what they were doing. So even though it might appear, so there's things like that you could say, let them have the ball, but we'll go to, we have a way. Of, no, we're not making, making let them have the ball. But if they if they do win the ball, we're going to surround them at the point where they want it, so they can't get out. So in other words, maybe two players have to go to that player at that time and watch where it's going. So whoever's near surrounds, put them under maximum pressure. Those are, are options. So I, I mean, you may maybe other things you can try, but. Uh, I th- always find that if you can ask the players themselves, they'll come up with things like that. Uh, so I said there could be a long list uh, of ideas on that, and it'll be too long to go through them. But I say, ask you ask your players if you've you've a squad of twenty players, twenty heads you could use. Uh, sorry, go ahead. The next one was there. Uh, your main skill sets for players, uh, defense attacks, and your main skill sets for play- yeah. I mean, yeah, if you're talking about those scenarios, going. For, Again, this is with the accurate passing. You know, so I mean, you've seen there uh, uh, Dublin and uh, uh, one of the clips, a uh, couple of great foot passes right across. We had the throw play with a left footed pass right across. Those, you know, that that that, that uh, it always does come back to skill because you do need to to be able to do that. And I think one of the things we're going to set up routines, uh, and particularly I watch in hand passing, is. If you go to onto sessions, coaches don't think of creating situations where the player is forced to use his left hand on his right and his right hand, and forced to use his right as right foot and left. You need to put them into those situations. I have a little routine I use myself, and if you're really interested, I'll send it on to you. If you get, you'll probably get my email address on that, and I, you know, if anybody wants it, I just send me and I'll send it back to you. I have a little routine I come up with myself, which does that. And I, I've done that with players, and if, and and it's good at getting players to get into using left and right hand, and it's a way of refining the skill. So I think you, it's about perfecting that uh, those skills of the game. Of course, handling does come into it, but uh, as well. Uh, okay, just, just, to, just the yeah. last couple. Of, you see, there is a couple more questions there, Brett, and that will do us. I think. Okay, all right. I see. How often would you encourage the goalkeeper to join? In a... <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, if they could do it, I mean, it's a great tactic if it works. But I mean, I, I think what's going to happen one of these days is, you know, and it's nearly happened a few times. The opposition start to realise this, and if you can catch your goalkeeper out, you know, uh, the goalkeeper out, then you know he'll be come back into his goals. So I mean. I was watching one there, uh, uh, throwing our mile where, where Morgan was out in the middle of the field. And I says, my God, if he doesn't get out of that rook shortly, and that ball sort of over the goal is completely open behind him. So, uh, you know, so the, you know, it's, 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 it's about timing. It's, it's about timing. That's the, it's, it, it works because what they're working, the principle is, is the extra man and talk about the overlap. So they're using the goalkeeper as the overlap player. That's what they're doing. And that's, and that's the principle. But I mean, you, it's up to the skill of the players uh, uh, how far they think they can take it. Underage players, what age would you start to implement? Oh yeah, well that that sort of st- uh, players they 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 um, when they're 13, 14 before they start to understand patterns of play and things like that and, and tactics and uh, uh, th- those sort of things. So probably around 13, they would you'd be starting to introduce them to that. Uh, okay. Um, Hey, you're talking about throwing. Okay, high risk, high reward. Okay. Did Fergal win? Greek the game. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think all I can. I don't know what. I don't know exactly what they did, but you know, uh, uh, the. Um, I mean, one of the things that that uh, I can say to you is, and you know, um, to quote Joe McMahon, one of the things they put a lot of emphasis was on skill. And and so I heard more be, uh, being talked about Tyrone last year about Joe McMahon's uh, uh, coaching skill and and refining their skill. So that comes back to what I was saying earlier. At the end of the day, the skills is what's going to matter, uh, it, it, or it'll let you down. 
Uh, and even actually, you'd make it easier for players to remember tactics. Uh, yes. Um, the, again, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that there, Paul. Uh, uh, the thing is, uh, remember about visuals. Um, so the thing is, uh, you need to ex always explain uh, movements and kickouts and tactics on a flip chart or, or, or a, a tactics board. The, the visual thing matters. Now, one of the things is that which I'd like to see get a coach to do more of is having a whiteboard on their line. Don't a, a small one. If you all you watch is Ameri if you watch American uh, basketball, you'll notice at the breaks that the basketball coaches have a little whiteboard and they're drawing on it and they're showing their tactics on it. And that's not by accident. They know if I want to communicate, I need to do it visually. So that's an important one. Uh, no, that's uh, that's it, coaches. Thank you uh, very much for joining in. That's just to thank Brenton again for this great knowledge. A great man. He delivers a lot of sessions to the OCJ here, and I tell you, he's a very, very knowledgeable man. And we're so uh, happy and honoured to have him de delivering these presentations for us. So thank you, Brenton, and thank, thank you, you, coaches. And we'll see you all hopefully in the future again when we put on more webinars. Thank you.